I was just a baby when my parents died in a car accident. My aunt took me in, and even though she was a poor single maid with not much to get by, she loved me like I was her own. Once when I was four, aunt came home on Christmas Eve looking bone tired, but when she took off her hat, I almost fell down in shock. Her long, beautiful hair was all gone. She looked like a boy. Don't look so worried. It'll grow back. I sold my hair because I didn't want another Christmas to go by without you having a present. She took out a beautiful necklace with my name on it and put it around my neck. I couldn't believe she'd done this for me. Aunt would always leave me with the neighbors when she went to work. But once when I was six, they had to go out of town and she had to take me with her. My jaw dropped when I saw her workplace. Our whole house could fit inside the hall of this mansion. Now I see why you're so tired all the time, auntie. You need a car to get around here. The lady of the mansion <laughs> overheard me and laughed. Oh, aren't you a little cutie pie? Why don't you come meet my son, Jeff? Just then, a boy my age walked up to me and gave me the warmest smile. Hey, wanna go play in my room? Yes! And that day was the day that changed my life forever. Yeah. I met my best friend. I loved hanging out with him, and I begged my aunt to take me with her often. Soon enough, Jeff's mom arranged for his private tutor to teach me too, so now I had a reason to go every day. As I grew older, my aunt started paying more attention to my looks. One day, she came home with a bag full of cheap makeup. You're a pretty girl, Nancy. You have to always look perfect when you're hanging out with Madame's boy. But auntie, we're friends, and he knows what I look like. Why would he care about my face? But she wouldn't hear a word, and after that, I always had to go to the mansion with a fully done-up face. Over the years, I realized that I had totally fallen in love with Jeff, but I knew I was just the maid's niece, and he'd never feel the same way about me. Once when I was 14, I fell really sick and couldn't go to the mansion for a week, but when I was alone at home one day, someone rang the doorbell and I was shocked to see that it was Jeff. Nancy, I was really worried about you. And with that, he suddenly hugged me. I totally panicked. I pushed him aside and ran to my room. Gosh, I looked so pale and terrible. I quickly applied makeup to my face and hurried downstairs. Why are you wearing makeup? Because I'm not pretty enough without it. Nancy, please go and wash your face. Can you do that for me? Okay, but will you promise to be nice? I promise. When I came back with my washed face, Jeff put his hand on my chin and held my face up. Nancy, you're so beautiful. As he pulled me closer, I saw his eyes were tearing up. We kissed and there were fireworks exploding in my head. He told me to take care of myself and left. I was excited and nervous about seeing him the next day. But when we got to the mansion, I saw his mom was busy supervising some men as they were taking out furniture from the house. She called me and handed me an envelope. This is your aunt's salary. A little something for you, too. I'll miss watching you grow up, Nancy. W what's happening, ma'am? Where's Jeff? He left last night because he transferred to a high school in Paris. And I'm going there, too. Maybe we'll see each other again someday. She pulled me into a warm hug and then walked away. I was so scared, thinking I'd never get to talk to Jeff again. But he emailed me a week later, and we wrote to each other every single day. His life in Paris seemed amazing. But soon, the emails got less and less frequent, till they just stopped altogether. He seemed to be really busy with his new life, and I figured it was time for me to move on with my own. By the time I graduated from high school, I was working two jobs, as a cleaner at the mall and a librarian's assistant. One day when I got huh? home, I found out that my aunt had broken her foot. I slipped at work and the doctor said I can't work for weeks. I can't afford to lose that job, Nancy. You won't, okay? I'll go instead. The next day, when I was cleaning one of the guest rooms, I came across a portrait of Jeff. As I touched it gently, a high-pitched voice suddenly made me jump out of my skin. Are you drooling over that dork? Well, you're just the maid, so I guess you don't have any standards. That's my stepbrother, and I have yet to meet a bigger loser than him. Jeff had a stepsister? Uh, no, I was just cleaning. I was still talking? Don't interrupt me. I'm Linda. That's Miss Linda for you. And now my mom and I live here, so I don't know why his ugly portrait is still around. You can throw it in the trash on your way out. I didn't have the heart to throw it away, so I snuck it into the dusty old attic and prayed she'd never go there. 
One evening, just as I was heading out of the mansion for work, Linda popped out of nowhere. Ninny, come with me. It's an emergency. I followed her to her room to see piles of dresses on the bed. I'm hosting a party tonight and I have to look amazing. You have to take pictures of me in every outfit so I can let my followers on Instagram decide. Miss Linda, I'm sorry, but I have plans with a friend and... <laughs> friend? Where does a maid even make friends? Is there a maid school you went to? No, just a regular high school. Listen, I don't have time for this. Cancel your stupid plans because you're supposed to help with the party. Didn't mom tell you? Now, chop chop, start my photo session. As if all this wasn't bad enough, I accidentally dropped a glass of juice on what? one of her friends and she went ballistic. OMG, this is literally the easiest job on the planet. First, your dumb aunt slips and breaks her foot, and now you're being such an idiot. Does stupidity run in the family? I turned around, grabbed my stuff, and ran out the front door. I was never coming back here. Just as I stepped out, I bumped into someone. Jeff? His adorable smile lit up his face, and he pulled me close. But suddenly, I pushed him away. No, you just cut me out of your life. And now you decide to walk back into mine and expect me to welcome you? I know you're mad. And I'll understand if you don't want to forgive me. But Nancy, I've missed you so much. So? Why didn't you stay in touch? I tried, but I had Dad watching me like a hawk. He did his best to make sure I wouldn't contact you because he felt you were distracting me. I'm so sorry. I looked at his face, and I knew he was being honest. Can you please just hug me now? We hugged. He whisked me away to a beautiful viewing point on a cliff with the whole city glittering beneath us and the stars above us. He gently drew me close and kissed me, and in that moment, it felt like everything was just right. The next day, I really didn't want to go back to work, but I did for aunt's sake. When I got there, Linda was already screaming at some maids. The minute she spotted me, she went off on me. Here comes another idiot. Did you think elves and fairies were going to come at night and clean this mess? It's still waiting for you. Get to it. Now! Before I could speak, I heard Jeff behind me. Knock it off, Linda. You can't talk to Nancy like that. Oh, I see. You're in love with this maid. Well, history really does repeat itself. Our dad also married way below his league when he chose your mom. <laughs> now it's your turn. Don't you dare say anything about my mom or Nancy. And you can't treat her this way. Oh, yeah? Watch me. And with that, she walked up to me and slapped me, and I just snapped. I pushed her to the ground, and just as I was about to punch her stupid face, Jeff pulled me away. Linda's mom came running at the commotion, and she fired me on the spot. I don't want you or your aunt to ever set foot in this house again. When I went home and told everything to aunt, she burst into tears. Please don't be upset. I promise I'll find another job. But just then, Jeff spoke up. You don't have to. Please, let me help you. I love Nancy, and you worked for us for so many years. It's the least I can do. I tried to refuse, but Jeff just wouldn't take no for an answer, so I accepted his offer till I found some work. Soon after, I got into college and also started a part-time job. As much as I wanted him to stay, I knew Jeff had to go finish his studies in Paris. We kept in touch as much as possible, and some days, I missed him enough to cry. On the day of my graduation, he didn't show up because he said his flight was delayed, and I felt really sad. But when I got home, I saw a brand new car outside, and Jeff hopped out of it. Suddenly, fireworks erupted in the sky, and Jeff took out a box from his pocket. Wait, what? He was going to propose? But when I opened it, I saw car keys inside. It's for you, babe. And here, this too. He handed me a letter, which was an offer to work at his dad's company. I squealed with joy and kissed him. Just a few weeks after I'd started working, I landed a big client for the company. Everyone gathered around in the conference room to congratulate me, and I rose from my seat. All those years when I was a maid, I could only dream of working in a place like this one. Some dreams really do come true, and I'm so grateful. Snap out of it, you idiot, because you don't belong here. Unless you're carrying a mop and cleaning the floors. We all turned around to see Linda, who looked mental. But just then, Jeff raised a toast to me, and so did everyone else, completely ignoring her. 
After working for a few months, I started noticing errors in the accounts, and I discovered that Linda had been embezzling a huge sum of money from the company. When I went to Jeff with all the proof, both Linda and her mom were immediately kicked off the board of directors. Jeff and his dad thanked me profusely, and soon after, he moved me and my aunt to his mansion. A year later, I was feeling really nauseous for a few days, and it turned out that I was pregnant. Jeff's family was overjoyed, and nine months later, we welcomed our daughter, Natasha. Unlike other kids, she couldn't complain about not being invited to our wedding. Natasha was the flower girl at the ceremony, and Jeff and I had the most beautiful wedding day ever. As long as I could remember, I'd always dreamed of having a brother. Probably since I'd first watched Spy Kids when I was five. Alas, I never got a sibling, but I had Alex my best friend. We had been inseparable since the very first grade, liked the same things, and shared all of our secrets. Alex had always been the coolest guy I knew, but the problem was that I was the only one who knew about how cool he was. At school, my best friend was a real wallflower. He dreamed of getting into the school's American football team more than anything else, except they wouldn't let him join because they thought he was a nerd and a bore. You can't even imagine how worried it made Alex. After all, he was perfectly fit for the team. But one day, the problem resolved itself. At least, that's what I thought. That day, I was walking down the school hallway when I heard a conversation between members of the football team. They looked upset, and their team captain Eric was saying, Well, this is definitely going to be the most depressing start of a season ever. Huh, I wonder what exactly he meant by that. I crept closer, and I started to eavesdrop. It turned out that they'd been planning to celebrate the start of the season at the house of one of the players, but his parents had forbidden it right at the last moment. So now, they had nowhere to throw the party. And that's when I came up with a brilliant idea. Without hesitating for even a second, I ran up to them and exclaimed, Hello! You need a place for a party, right? The players looked at me with disbelief. <laughs> However, after a couple of seconds, Eric replied, Yeah, we do. I plucked up the courage and I continued. Come to Alex's place. He throws the coolest parties. And his parents won't be there. They didn't even understand who I was talking about at first. But I quickly explained everything, and I wrote them a detailed instruction on how to get there. Also, I left my phone number, just in case. Then, beaming with joy, I ran to the canteen to tell my friend the amazing news. Alex! Alex! You won't believe what just happened. I invited the entire football team to come to a party at your house. And they agreed to come! At that moment, I was beside myself with joy, but my friend's reaction turned out to be 